all the mistakes you can make on a cruise ship. Some of them are obviously things that you wouldn't know until someone tells you they're a mistake. But there are some that are so easy to avoid that I think we need to talk about them up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Of all the mistakes a first-time cruiser can make, some are very easy to avoid because they are likely the easiest to identify as a pitfall. I've shared plenty of advice here on a YouTube channel about how to avoid cruise mistakes over the years, and most of these mistakes are the sort of problems new cruisers would have no idea exist until it's too late. But there are plenty of mistakes that don't require years of cruise experience to identify as a fault. I've certainly overlooked these mistakes as a given, but... It's important to remember that plenty of people new to cruising try the sort of vacation every day, which means it's important to cover these topics as well. So consider this a refresher for what not to do in order to cover all your bases and not succumb to an easy first time cruiser mistake. Starting off with number one, not knowing what time to be back on the ship. The last thing you want to do is be late and your cruise ship to leave you behind in the port. To that point, Royal Caribbean posts the time that you need to be on the ship in multiple places and communicates it over the public address system. To begin with, you'll need to be on board the ship the first day of the cruise, known as embarkation day, by a certain time in order to make the cruise. Whether your travel plans get you to the cruise ship are delayed or simply you get busy in town, all passengers need to be on board the ship by the all aboard time in order to be admitted to the cruise. Oftentimes, most passengers are competing to get the earliest check-in time for the cruise, but you'd be surprised how many people get on board in like that final hour before the ship's gangway is disconnected. The exact time you must be on board depends on the itinerary, but usually it's mid to late afternoon. Similarly, you only be back on the ship by a certain time in each port of call that your cruise ship visits during your voyage. Cruise ships remain docked in port for a set amount of time and must leave by a certain time to ensure they can stick to the planned schedule. It's really easy to avoid making this mistake because the times are posted in a lot of different places. On the first day of the cruise, pick a time for check-in via the Royal Caribbean app and then get to the terminal at that time. It's okay if you're a little late because, of course, life happens, but there is a finite amount of time to get to the terminal before they will deny you boarding because the ship needs to leave. Now, on days your cruise ship is in port, the all-aboard time, which is the time you need to be back on board by, is posted in the cruise compass, the Royal Caribbean app, and there are signs near the gangway as you disembark. Always triple check whether the all-aboard time is based on the ship's clock or local time. The next incredibly easy cruise mistake to make, and to avoid for that matter, is picking a cruise ship that doesn't have the activity you want on board. If you're disappointed in the cruise ship you're sailing on because it doesn't have a water slide, a particular show, or activity you really wanted to do, the issue could have been avoided had you looked up information about the ship before you booked it. Royal Caribbean has a fleet of over 20 cruise ships, and they're not all the same. While the TV commercials you see will show off a variety of fun things to do, these activities are not on every ship. You don't need to spend hours researching to know what each ship offers. Understanding what a ship has and doesn't have is an easy way to avoid regret later on. Next up, sunburn. After one day on a cruise, you'll start noticing a few people on your cruise walking around with that beet red look to them, and it could have been easily avoided. Getting sunburn is never fun, and on a cruise in the tropics, it's very easy because of how strong the sun is in this part of the world. When you're on vacation, it's easy to get caught up in the euphoria and the excitement that comes with the time away from it all, but you will absolutely regret looking like a lobster later when the after effects of the sunburn start to kick in. Nothing ruins your beautiful cruise photos like a giant red sunburn, not to mention how painful it can be to the person who has it. So be sure not to only pack sunscreen, but apply it early and often. Another incredibly easy cruise mistake to avoid is not putting your phone into airplane mode. When you leave the country, your cell phone goes into roaming mode, and that can be incredibly costly. On a Royal Caribbean cruise ship, you're outside your cell phone's company service area, and that is what the cell phone industry refers to as roaming. And it doesn't matter if you have an international plan. Cruise ship antennas are not the same thing as visiting Mexico or Europe. Instead of using your cell provider's network, you're going to be using someone else's cell phone tower and network. So in simple terms, this means you'll be charged an arm and a leg to get cell phone access outside the U.S. Instead, put your phone into airplane mode, which deactivates your cellular antenna. You can still use your phone when in airplane mode to connect to the Wi-Fi, take photos, or use any of your apps. Next up, not knowing about activities on board. Missing out on a fun activity can be a real downer while on a cruise. Karaoke, bingo, shows, demonstrations are all available every day of your cruise, but it's up to you to know when it's happening. It's really common to hear somebody tell somebody else about a really fun event they attended and then hear the other person profess 
disdain for being unaware it was happening. Moreover, some events only happen like once a cruise. Certain activities may only be offered once or twice, so you'll need to be aware of the schedule to avoid missing out. All the events of the cruise are listed in the Cruise Compass, as well as the Royal Caribbean app. It's a really good idea to review the schedule each evening for the following day to ensure that you wake up in time for anything that you have your heart set on doing. You can even set reminders in the Royal Caribbean app by adding the events to my calendar. It contains important information like hourly activities, the weather, special happenings, drink of the day, and information on the ports. Another incredibly easy mistake to avoid is carrying your wallet around on board. This tip is just about comfort more than anything else, but I really don't know why anybody carries their wallet around the ship once they're able to get into their staterooms. Each cabin has a safe that you can put valuables in, like your wallet, and so to avoid it being lost or being stolen. In short, there's no reason to have a wallet while you're on your ship. Royal Caribbean cruise ships are cashless, so all transactions are done via the CPAS card. You won't need credit cards or identification in the regular flow of the day. There are still a few times when cash is needed, like in the casino, of course, or when you're tipping your waiter, but there's less risk in carrying a wad of cash in your pocket rather than the entire content of your wallet. Considering that most men's wallet look like something out of George Costanza's wallet, if you remember that episode of Seinfeld, then maybe a spelt money clip, you'll feel far more at ease with a wallet safely stowed in the safe. This next mistake might be the most common one. Actually, the sunburn is definitely the most common. All right, this is like number two most common. Packing prohibited items. There's a fairly long list of things you can't bring on a Royal Caribbean cruise, and there's always plenty of people who try to bring them anyway. On embarkation day, security will scan every piece of luggage coming on board. If they find something you shouldn't have, they'll hold your bag. This means your luggage won't be delivered to your cabin, and you have to wait several more hours for security to contact you. And at that point, you'll need to meet security and watch them confiscate the prohibited item till the end of the cruise. It's really easy to avoid this issue by looking at Royal Caribbean's website and reviewing the prohibited items list before you start packing for your cruise. Don't assume, as an example, irons machetes, fireworks, weapons of any kind. They're not allowed on board. There's plenty more beyond that list, but make sure you don't bring any of these. It's an, so easy to not pack any of these items by checking this list. Another really easy mistake to avoid is not double checking. You have travel documents before leaving home. If you forget to pack underwear, you can always buy more at the nearest port, but if you forget your travel documents, you won't be able to go on the cruise at all. Due to government regulations, you absolutely need to have the proper travel documents with you in order to cruise. Make sure you have your passport birth certificates, and other forms of identification on your cruise packing list. Then, when it's time to leave your house, check again that those items are actually packed in the right bag. One more tip, keep all your travel documents with you during the cruise ship boarding process. Do not pack any of them in the luggage that you give the porters. And the last incredibly easy cruise mistake to avoid is not knowing the difference between port and starboard. I get it, nautical terms are different than what we were used to on land, but there's a fair amount of cruise ship lingo out there. But if there are two terms, you should figure out very quickly to make navigation easier for yourself. It's these two, port and starboard. When facing the front of the ship, port is the left side and starboard is the right. So how do you remember which one is which? An easy trick to remember is port and left, those words are both four letter words. So there you go. There you have it. Nine incredibly easy cruise mistakes to avoid when going on a cruise. Again, this isn't the total list. I just picked out these nine as like incredibly super duper easy to avoid, like there's no excuse for not avoiding them because they seem, I don't want to say painfully obvious, but they're at the top of the most commonly made and yet easily avoidable. And if I say easily avoidable one more time, I'm sure there's a drinking game that can be construed from this. Anyway, hopefully this video helped you out there. Let me know in the comments below what mistakes of all of them out there do you think anybody going on a cruise could and should avoid? Let me know down there below. While you're down below this video, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. We'll talk again real soon.